Well, today let's look at the bones of the hand. You can appreciate how the hand articulates with the distal ends of the radius and the ulna. And notice we have the styloid processes that sort of frame the wrist bones here, which of course are referred to as the carpals. Um, let's take a look at these individual carpal bones. This first one, that's a relatively large bone, is referred to as the scaphoid bone. The term scaphoid means trough. And then right next to it is the lunate bone. The term lunate refers to a lunar property of this, which means it looks a little bit like a moon. I'm not sure that I can show you that with this particular model. Oh, there it is, right there. Can you see the crescent moon here? So that's the lunate bone. And then we have, right next to the lunate, the triquatrum, which is the triangular shaped bone, it really means triangle. And then right on top of the triquatrum is the pisiform bone. The term pisiform means pea-like, so pisum is the genus for pea. All right, so scaphoid, lunate, triquatrum, pisiform. Let's go to the other side and start with the thumb side again. And this one is the trapezium. The trapezium creates this saddle joint that I think you guys have already studied a bit. So that's the only true saddle joint in the body. So this is, again, the trapezium. And then right next to it is sort of a five-sided little bone that's called trapezoid, just a five-sided figure. This is the capitate. Almost looks like a head and a neck, so maybe we should call it the decapitate, but nonetheless, it's the capitate bone. And then this one with the little hook is referred to as the hamate, so the hamate bone. And the term hamate means hook. Notice that the hook is right above the little P, the pisiform. So, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. Now, let's go through all of them again, and what I like to do is start with the thumb side and work my way to the little finger side, first using the proximal carpal bones and then followed by the distal carpal bones. So, scaphoid, lunate, triquatrum, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. And what you need to remember is silly lovers try positions that they can't handle. Let's do that again. Silly lovers try positions that they can't handle. This is a relatively old mnemonic, but nonetheless it works. All right, so scaphoid is silly, lunate is lovers, triquatrum is tri, positions is pisiform, that is trapezium, they is trapezoid, can't is capitate, and handle is hamate, all right? So silly lovers try positions that they can't handle, and once again, scaphoid, lunate, triquatrum, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. All right, let's get out of the carpals real quick and learn some of the easier bones. These first bones here that make the palm of the hand, you can appreciate how this would be the palm here, right? which is why the fingers, so to speak, of the skeleton look so long is because obviously this is fleshed out in the palm. These are the metacarpals, and this is metacarpal one, two, three, four, and five. If you can count to five, you've got the metacarpals down. Metacarpal one, metacarpal two, metacarpal three, metacarpal four, metacarpal five. These are the phalanges, so phalanx would be the individual name. This is phalanx one, and this is proximal phalanx one. This is proximal phalanx two. This is proximal phalanx three. This is proximal phalanx four, proximal phalanx five. Now, on the thumb, we have a distal phalanx, but not a middle phalanx. So we have distal phalanx one, distal phalanx two, distal phalanx three, distal phalanx 4, distal phalanx 5. Remember, there's no middle phalanx on the thumb, so we'll start here with the, oops, I'm sorry, here with the middle phalanx. And this is 
middle phalanx two, middle phalanx three, middle phalanx four, middle phalanx five. So if we take a look at that second finger, proximal phalanx two, middle phalanx two, distal phalanx two, proximal phalanx three, middle phalanx three, distal phalanx three, proximal phalanx four, middle phalanx four, distal phalanx four, proximal phalanx five, middle phalanx five, distal phalanx five. Collectively, they're called the phalanges. Again to the thumb, this is proximal phalanx one and distal phalanx one, no middle phalanx one. All right, that should about do it. Um, actually, let's flip this over real quick. Um, usually when I test, I like to do this palmer side of the hand because you can appreciate here on the distal side, we cannot see some things. We cannot see the hamate bone and we cannot see, uh, we can see the hamate bone actually, but we can't see the hook of the hamate bone and we cannot see the pisiform bone. So we see scaphoid, lunate, triquatrum, but no pisiform, right? And then, of course, we see the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and the hamate without the hook. And so really, it's much more obvious when you look at not the dorsal side, but the palmar side. All right, thanks.